In a previous video, we investigated the beginning of a ransomware attack within an AWS cloud environment. This was part of a workshop that was being provided by the AWS search teams. So that would be the predecessor to this video. If you really want to understand the context and follow along, I definitely recommend checking out that video first, watching it, and then coming to this video. In today's video, we'll be going into part two of this ransomware attack. And here, we're going to be exploring a data exfiltration attack as part of the sequence of activities that happened in this whole ransomware activity. So let's just get right into the video. All right. Right, so we'll be continuing from part two which is investigating ransomware and we've been doing everything within athena which has been acting as a way by which we can query all the different databases that contain all the data that we have security wise and just basically easily access them within the query results here now like i said we have a couple of questions to get through so let's just use these questions to guide our investigation here also you might notice i don't have my camera on that's because i don't want my camera to obstruct the details over here on this side of the screen so so bear with me on that this video is brought to you by my LinkedIn learning course. I've spent the last couple of years immersed in the world of cybersecurity, dedicating my career to detecting, responding, and building engineering solutions for threats against cloud environments, including ones for Fortune 500 companies and even some of your favorite tech and non-tech companies. From this invaluable experience, I have created comprehensive cloud forensics and incident response labs on training platforms you're familiar with, like Let's Defend and Blue Team Labs Online by Security Blue Team. And these labs were designed for individuals keen on learning how to detect and respond to cloud threats. But you know what? I felt like I could do way more. And that's why I'm excited to present to you my very first course on LinkedIn Learning, introducing my introduction to AWS Threat Detection course. In this course, you'll dive into the essentials needed to build and enhance your skills in AWS Threat Detection. Whether you're a SOC analyst, a cloud security engineer, a cloud engineer, a DevOps engineer, or a DevSecOps engineer, this course has got you covered with all the necessary knowledge that you need to kickstart your journey in AWS threat detection. So if that sounds exciting to you, make sure to click the link in this video description or the pinned comments or the link in my bio to get started. I can't wait to see you in the course. All right, the very first question is the name of the object that was taken was credit card data.csv. In which bucket and prefix or folder location was this object stored. Now let's come back in here. By the way, like I said, if you haven't watched the initial video, you're losing a lot of context into how we got to this point. So basically watch the first video and then come back to this video so we can continue with our investigation. All right. So we're looking for when this object was taken and let's just copy that here. Since we know this is going to exist within CloudTrail and within CloudTrail, uh, when you're looking for specific things like, you know, for objects or for specific details that were retrieved, we can use a value like that, that we know and look for it within the request parameter. Parameters. The request parameters typically contains details about the request that was made by the user or by the service. And that is typically ingrained within the CloudTrail log. And you can use that as a way to filter for specific things that might have been part of that request. So in this case, we're just going to do where the request parameters has details that contain credit card data.csv since we already know that that was the name of the object that was taken. And let's run that. Okay, so we have issue here. Oops, failed to add add quotes there that should fix that all right looks like we have about three results here and there are different things here so let's just sift through it so we see the user that's performing this activity seems to be a different user from the original user that we saw initially when we were investigating i believe this right because when we were investigating this oh this is different but yeah the initial user that we saw was different from this user so that means this might be another user at play here but back here we can see if we scroll through here all right perfect so we see three different requests for this particular file here and we see there's a head object a delete object and a get objects let's take a look at what these different api calls mean so head object and i like doing this because i like explaining what these different api calls mean in aws because when you're doing instant response or you're doing threat detection you're going to be dealing with a lot of api calls especially if you're within a cloud environment so just being a bit familiar with these different api calls and knowing how to find details about them is pretty important so for example the head object api call here shows that it retrieves metadata from an object without returning the object itself. So it seems like maybe they just were able to just get details about the object without actually seeing the object itself or retrieving the object itself. So more like maybe some sort of like reconnaissance or whatever the case might be. Now there's a delete object, which the name is, you know, very obvious. So it seems like this inserts a delete marker, which becomes the latest version of the object. Now, again, there's some different nuances with like S3 objects and versioning that I can go into in an entirely 
slightly different video, but just bear in mind that this basically removes the object. It basically deletes the object at a high level. And then finally, there's a get object API call, which basically retrieves the object. So, you, so it could be a form of exfiltration from the bucket by the attacker getting the object. So now that we have an idea of what these different things, what is different actions hap have happening are, let's look at what the actual name of the object that was taken. And it looks like the get object API call is our API call of interest. And let me zoom in further here since like everything is all the way down. All right. So the get object API call is what we're looking at here. We see it's in US East one from that IP address uh, from that particular user agent. And if we look, it's within this bucket and it right, and it's within this bucket right here. Bucket simulation bucket zero three, whatever that data is. So that is a bucket that this object was taken from. And we have a you know a couple more details here and some other stuff. But yeah, this is the bucket that it was taken of. Actually, I would actually even prefer to grab the bucket with its ARN just so we need to refer to that data later on in the video. But yeah, that's root that's the answer to this first question here. It's the the bucket and also the prefix slash folder. We can see that as well here would be the backup customers payment information. So we, we could just copy the entire path of everything bucket folder object all of that and i'm just gonna make a, a comment here bucket and folder and it's that so that's that should answer the very first question that we're looking at the next question is did the ransomware group take the object if so what was the date and time i guess we've seen that already here right they did a get object and if we go back to the first question maybe we misunderstood the question the name of the object that was taken was credit card yeah so so yeah we do know that the object was taken you know there's a get object api call here now another thing that's also really cool within the cloud trail logs is if you look within the user agent the user agent also typically shows sometimes if they're using uh, the aws cloud shell the actual command that they ran from the aws cloud shell and we can see here the first command here was an s3 copy command an s3 rm command and an s3 cp command so the rm command actually is to delete an object it's basically the same rm command you'd use within the linux command line and it seems like they actually remove the object and that also corresponds with the delete object api call and then here again if we look the copy command looks like it also corresponded with the get object api call so that's also another really cool way by which you can dig into attacker activity looking at the user agents could also surface some things that you might not see you know at the high level whether with the api call or whatever the case might be so back to our question here they're asking us did the ransomware group take the object yes to that and if so what was the date and time so the actual time when the ransomware group took the object was this one and that date and time was this here so we can actually copy that and i'm just going to put this here date and time of object xfail was this now the next question was was the credit card data the csv object deleted yes it was deleted and we were able to see that now whether it's through the actual api call the event name or through the user agent that contains that rm command we can see that so yes we can confirm that the object was deleted and we can also confirm again that it is the right object that was deleted so if we go in here we see it's that same object which is basically the same object across these three different api calls next question here is what ip address and user agent did the ransomware group use to perform the unauthorized activity so all of these activities were performed from a single ip address this particular ip address here so let's say attacker IP is that. And then they also asked what user agent did the ransomware group use to perform the unauthorized activity. And for that, we can look in here and we see it's the AWS TLI user agent. Uh, I think I lost that for a second. Yeah, there we go. So it's this particular user agent. And the very last thing here, you know, of course it changes, but this is the main user agent that the attackers use. So let's copy that and just see, and just put that into our notes here as well. Kind of also taking notes as I'm, you know, doing this. So I'm just doing do attacker user agent is going to be that be that next what is the name of the iam user that took the object we can also see that within this same query here if we go back the iam user is this tdir workshop J S T I L E S dev but again i always like to copy the arn just so we can access everything but yeah it looks like the im user that took the object was that user so let's just add that as well i'm just going to do compromised iam 
user, that user there. And then let's go to the next question. Was the IM user used to take any other objects? Hmm, that's a good question. Well, since we know the IM user now, let's grab that IM username and we're gonna update our query here. So here we're looking for where, let's take this out. So since we know the IM user, I'm gonna look at other get object API calls from this IM user. Let's do where the user identity uh, username. Are we gonna do ARN? I already have the ARN copied. So user identity ARN is, uh, oops, wrong quote. Mm, actually, I copied the wrong thing, but let's just use uh, user identity username in this case, user, I can type username, and then we're just going to do equals that. And also looking for where the API call is get object. And I uh, would we'll do event, event name. It's an event underscore name. I think it's event. Hi. Wait, yeah, should be event name. Is it that? Hopefully, maybe. Event name is get object. I mean, I could actually just look at that here. Why am I trying to guess? Event, oh, actually it's lowercase. Okay, that's my fault. All right, let's go back and update that to uppercase event name is get object. And let's rerun that query. All right, oh, okay. We have 451 results. That is a lot of results. So back to the question, we're looking at if the IAM user took any other object and it looks like they might have taken a bunch of other objects. Maybe let's see. Let's see what they took here. I'm trying to look through the request parameters. I see the bucket name and oh, seems like they took a bunch of other objects. We see a, a ton of Excel files that they took right here. So a bunch of things were actually taken from this particular, well, not from the same bucket. It might be. Yeah, this, these are these are all the same bucket. Are they all the same bucket? Seems like they're all the same bucket. Yeah. It does seem like it's all the same bucket. Yeah. Bucket name, OY all the way up. Yeah. It does seem like that was the same bucket that they stole all this data from. And yeah, this is all the things that they stole. A bunch of Excel files. Yes. A bunch of Excel files. And it looks like there are more pages here. So let me just actually make this smaller because I'm actually curious to see if there were like other things beyond just Excel files that they stole here. So let's go to the next page and see what they stole again. And it looks like the same thing, same bucket, bunch of Excel files next page. Let's scroll to the right. Looks like the same thing as well. A bunch of Excel files. Boom, boom, boom. Next page. I wonder how far this goes. It's the user agent. Same thing. Bunch of Excel files. Yep. Bunch of Excel files. And let's go to the right again. Oh, last page. Perfect. And we scroll to the right. See a bunch of Excel files. And then we see the credit card data. I was actually looking for that credit card data again just to make sure my thinking was validated. But yeah, they stole a bunch of Excel files and then the credit card data. And then the next question is what other activities were performed with this IEM user? Oh, okay. So, <clears throat> so we know that the IAM user did a get object, a delete object, and a head object API call from our initial analysis. So let's look for everything that is not any of those API calls. So let's look at event name that is not, and we're just going to use an exclamation mark to negate that query. And we just do the same thing for this and then duplicate it for the head object, head object. And then the third one was, I believe a delete object. Yeah, it was a delete object. So let's take that that out delete and then we can run that query again so what do we get so we get 17 results okay so let's see what they were doing otherwise ah, okay so it started with a bunch actually let me sort this by time make sure it's sorted by time properly okay oh okay make sure it's sorted by time 18 16 15 oh, oh okay there we go 33 53 55 58 50. okay perfect so according to this timeline it looks like they started with a get color identity this is pretty ubiquitous with these attackers they're always doing get color identities like they typically always show their behaviors. This is an easy way to actually catch attackers, maybe seeing like an unusual get color identity. Now, a lot of get color identities might exist within your environment, but just some unusual get color identities from maybe like a weird location could be an indicator of an attacker trying to orient themselves within your AWS environment. And we see a bunch of object enumeration, a bunch of bucket enumeration, and then create access keys. So this is them creating access keys, I would imagine for persistence. And then again, doing a get color identity that's kind of weird and then deleting the access key and then listing access keys well looks like they don't know what they're doing or maybe they're just i don't know playing around whatever the case is but yeah just a bunch of enumeration and then a bunch of you know uh, possible persistence as well and that answers that question oh and then answers that question but let's actually take a little bit more time to look at these last few api calls because i think that they're a bit weird and a bit interesting but let's take a look at them 
real quick. Let's see what is happening here. Okay, 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 okay. So it looks like, I wonder what I can do here. It looks like, all right, so it looks like this create access key was done against this user right here, which is the TDIR workshop RROE dev user. And if you remember from the first video, this was the user that was doing a bunch of malicious activities. If we go back to investigating ransomware one, this same user was the, was the user who created a bucket and also uploaded the ransom note. And if you go back into our query editor, that is the user that was created. Next thing that was done was to delete the access key. Now, I imagine, now that I think about it, them deleting the access key might just be a way of trying to cover their tracks so that, you know, maybe someone doesn't recognize them using the access key. But again, I think when you delete access keys, you have to first deactivate them. So that might not be the right um, way, the way I'm thinking about it. Okay, I want to make this viewing experience better because I want to dig a little bit deeper into those last few API call. So let's make these columns resizable. So I wanted to quickly enhance the viewing experience for these last couple of API calls. So let's just take a look at them quickly, uh, starting from the create access key API call. So we see the create access key API call followed by a delete access key API call. And if we scroll to the right, we can see that this in the request parameters, we can see that an access key was created for this TDIR workshop uh, RROE dev user. And again, if you watch the first video, you would see that this was the user who was performing some activities in the AWS environment like creating the bucket and then uploading the ransomware note that we saw in the very first video and then afterwards it seems like this access key was deleted as well which is pretty interesting now let's go on to the next two behaviors the attacker performed next thing they did was they did a list access keys and they did a get color identity api call if we move further to the right then next we have two api calls one for list access keys and one for get color identity and if we go further to the right to look at the request parameters the list access keys was to look at the access keys that are available for this particular user that the access access key was created for maybe to confirm that they actually deleted the access keys and then this was the get color identity that was done again by uh, this particular user that we're investigating which I believe is this uh, J Steels dev user and then it looks like there's another get color identity again so this is just basically the attacker creating access keys deleting access keys listening access keys for this user that was in it that was compromised which we already analyzed in the initial video so yeah that's it we've analyzed the data exfiltration portion that was part of this ransomware activity this is just part two and we have part three and part for the go through so again if you haven't watched part one definitely watch part one to gain the context and in part three we're going over some activities the attacker might have performed to further compromise this aws environment as part of the ransomware attack using aws s3 thanks for watching this video and i'll see you in the next video Bye bye